Hi, Bernard. Hi, Carsten. <laughs> this will be the grand finale, yeah? <laughs> yes, uh, it's going to be interesting. So, what do we uh, do? We, yes, we do the unplanned stuff. So, the unplanned outage, the disaster, right? And first, we'll kick it off with a um, node failure, right? So, um, I think we are shutting down one node. Maybe not so cool or... Maybe blue screen Not would be shutting cooler, down. But we do a blue screen, my friend. Shut down. Ah, would okay, good. So would be a plan, live, right? Yes. Kind uh, of plan. Okay. Blue screen. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, our portion of blue this day. Okay, good. Um, which is good. Um, and then we'll, you know, see how how long it takes before the uh, cluster picks it up, before the virtual machines that are that have been running on that node uh, are sort of. Um, put into production again or put into work again on another mm -hmm. node, uh, see how that behaves. And then um, I think we'll, you know, start up the node one more time, have a look uh, for its repair jobs. And once that's cleaned out uh, and everything is okay again, then we'll do the failure of a whole site. That means we are crashing two nodes and then um, in the same site and see how that performs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and th I think that's it, right? It's it's going to be an interesting session. Um, obviously, we do one. this at the end of the whole series because if we break anything, we'll you know stop it here. <laughs> we will not <laughs> Let's break see. anything. No, no, okay. Yeah. The thing is better better than we think. So um, yeah, yeah, I good. Oh, good. Share my screen now. Mm -hmm. uh, here you see I have my we have our VM workload running. We are creating roughly 40, 14,000 8K IOPS on every node. So yep. um, we have a mild workload running. Mm -hmm. Our volumes are aligned yeah, to every node. So we switch over to our uh, management uh, host. Mm -hmm. Here we see our cluster. All the nodes are here. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And here we have one VM running. So in one yep. VM, we, we uh, also um, started the task manager while the workload is testing everything. And we so see with, we have... Yeah. So with have aligned, our rights you mean, and reads. Yeah. So with aligned, you mean that this virtual machine is currently number seven, is running on node number one. Mm -hmm. And node number one is also owning the storage or the volumes where the disk is that this virtual machine is writing to, right? So exactly, that's okay. okay so good. to do some fun stuff, we will we will blue screen node three. Okay. You see here because node one and node three are in the odd side, and in the last video we recognized mm -hmm. that our collect volume that we need for our workload it's not stretched. So our VM mm -hmm. workload, VM fleet is only running if they can access the collect volume, and this is in uh, in the even side. So we will okay. crash the odd side this mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And you see here I have the BMC of one of those nodes. We use that heavily in the installation series. We were a lot mm -hmm. in the uh, in the BMC, okay. and I installed um, a little funny program uh, uh, called Not My Fault. Um, it is <laughs> from Mark Zinovich, and you find it on uh, the this internal uh, mm -hmm. site. It's uh, a site from Microsoft. Microsoft bought Win internal and this internal. And Mark Zinovich, some of you know them, maybe know him, maybe as a CTO. So the chief technology technology officer of Azure. So, but he has also done some fun stuff. And uh, this thing is has a kernel mode driver, uh, and we can do weird things. So I guess this is for system programmers, operating system programmers, to test different scenarios, weird. In our scenarios like memory leaks uh, or some hang status or even crashes. And this one, the high EAQ fault kernel mode, this is a blue screen. So when we, when I press on crash, we will have a blue screen on the node and we should see here yep. the blue stuff. Yeah. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> do it now. So yeah. let's see, I yes. move this a bit over. Mm -hmm. And I lost my window again because it's not on the host. It should be this one. Yeah, there it is. So I press on crash and um, I, I see a weird sound. So I pressed on crash. It takes <laughs> yeah. a, a bit before we see the blue screen here, unfortunately. 
So come on. This is not the mouse in the program. Oh, it's still there somehow. Let's do a crash again. Come on, crash it. That's weird, but uh, it will crash. There we are. So it's crashing and I turn it off now because that it doesn't start automatically. So now we turned off the host, I move it over yeah, and you see here power off. So let's see the cluster. Let's look at the nodes. Uh, the cluster has not recognized that uh, get cluster node, that the node is gone, but, and here, but our cluster PowerShell already has, mm -hmm. you see here down. So let's do a refresh. And we see now mm -hmm. that our node is not down, like it's stated in PowerShell, it's isolated. And mm -hmm. uh, we will talk about this isolated stuff uh, soon, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and you also see this VM is unmonitored. It's, it's not restarting. So if we go to the roles here, mm -hmm. normally, so, the management has a bit of problems in the moment to remotely talk to the cluster, but here you see our node. Some we see unmonitored. Mm -hmm. Let's do a refresh. Uh, now we see running. And here all that is running on the node three is unmonitored. Mm -hmm. Okay. So should we explain what that means? Yes, uh, definitely, because we do have people that you know might be new to um, failover clustering or HCI, right, and haven't you know seen this or you know need some uh, some explanation on this one. Um, and it also you know it's it's like the way of how the cluster is configured, right? So you are bringing up the configuration for um, for the heartbeats. So uh, there are some settings that are there um, that influence the the heart beating process and how to figure out you know when a node goes down when should we act as a cluster when how you know because sometimes the network in between you know is sort of maybe not so stable and it would not be advisable to react maybe quite uh, or simultaneously right uh, when missing some heartbeats but um, that are the default settings you bring up here right so you, we say in the same subnet we are sending out with a delay of 1000 milliseconds a heartbeat right so every mm -hmm. milli uh, every second there is a heartbeat mm -hmm. and we are allowed to lose 10 heartbeats before we react right mm -hmm. um, as we do have a stretch cluster we do have also you know a different setting for the cross subnet delay which is sitting for the other nodes on the other side which is uh, we are sending out the heartbeats in the same interval meaning one thousand milliseconds equals one second but we are allowed to lose 20 of those before mm -hmm. we need to act okay however that's for the isolation right so um that figures out you know when a node needs to uh, when a cluster node needs to be isolated um but the second value that you bring up is is different right it is for a different uh purpose yeah so first the heartbeat is that the that the nodes recognize there's something wrong. There's one node missing, and yeah. uh, if this time is up, this time or this time, depending on the scenario, uh, the cluster will do something. So, for example, there are some cluster groups and roles in the cluster that will be started immediately, like the host server. The host yeah. server is our management endpoint. Yeah, so it will be there after 10 seconds if the cluster is in the same site. So, not a stretch cluster. And after 20 seconds, if it's uh, if it's not in the same site, we will we we can manage our cluster again. Mm -hmm. So um, and this is how the cluster behaved until 2016. So with Windows Server 2016, Microsoft introduced also the resiliency default period. What we see mm -hmm. here, our yep. nodes are they are not. Uh, the VMs are not started on another node as, as we would expect after the heartbeat figures out so there's something wrong with the node. Mm -hmm. But Microsoft decided to add a value uh, and, uh, in, and in this time, in 240 seconds that are added after mm -hmm. the cluster has figured out there's something wrong with the node, I can't reach it, it will give it the resiliency default period of 240 seconds um, 
waiting that the node is uh, appearing again. So mm -hmm. the scenario would be the node hasn't have a blue screen. We have a problem in the network and the heartbeat can't reach the other side. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we don't shut down the VMs on the on the side that has not the cluster quorum and start mm -hmm. the VMs on the side that has the cluster quorum. We wait an additional time that our network network comes back again. Uh, this is maybe useful if you really have a stretch cluster scenario. For example, the metro cluster where we talked about, where we have a long distance between the two cluster sites. Uh, and uh, usually if you have a long distance, remember our example, London, Paris, yeah, you usually have only one way through the network to reach the other side. Mm. So if there is a problem on that, on that, on that way, switch is rebooting. Have dark fiber and the switches rebooting or whatever, the nodes are perfectly fine, but they can't see each other. So this additional time is a good good thing here. Yeah. In yeah. So the cluster, yeah, 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 as said, I mean it's a resiliency thing. So you know, over the whole story regarding failover clustering, um, it was sort of yeah, came up as a best practice, right? Because some things can happen and you don't want to have the cluster to react so heavy or so strict right so you softening the mm -hmm. behavior of the cluster a little bit in order to yeah but uh, but what the people have to know this mm -hmm. is in every cluster so also if you have a cluster that isn't the same side there the the, the, right. the servers are touching each other we have multiple ways we have um, our management network over other switches and our storage networks or we have switchless for example, if you don't know what I mean here, please rewatch our our installation series. Uh, uh, there are multiple ways for the heartbeat, and the heartbeat is not going over one network; it's going over multiple ones. So yeah. usually, if you have a if you can't read the heartbeat can't reach a running node, you have mm -hmm. other problems in this scenario than uh, this one. So. Um, mm -hmm. Think about it, modifying this parameter if you have a non-stretch cluster where everything is in the same side. And mm -hmm. even if you have a stretch cluster like we have here, where we have multiple ways, we can go over management, different switches. We can go over mm -hmm. the cluster networks. They are routed, different mm -hmm. switches. Uh, yep. Yeah, so the heartbeat has multiple ways over different uh, switches. So if Side A can't reach side uh, B, or the the even side can't reach the odd side. Mm. All network paths are gone, and it should usually not happen. Yeah. So, so um, rule of thumb would be, you know, have multiple ways, uh, multiple network paths for the heartbeat, right? Um, if exactly. set up, uh, watch out for heartbeat losses, right? Um, these are never good, right? So um, you need to have a look in there, and then if you are you know, if uh, start with the defaults, but you may fine tune it on the course of action when you see, hey, um, some behavior I need maybe to be a little bit more responsive. I know that my network is a very stable one, then uh, you might need to, um, you know, or you can maybe adjust some settings to go to lower values, or if the network is, you know, not so good, then you might want to raise the numbers a little bit in order to be more resilient, right? Um, exactly. So I just yeah. started the node again because it mm -hmm. takes a bit of time until it right. comes up. But if we look here in our in our um, in our um, right. rollover cluster manager, now after the 240 additional seconds, the node mm -hmm. is uh, declared down. It was mm -hmm. isolated, but now it's right. down. Mm -hmm. And then the cluster will move uh, VMs uh, or will start the VMs on other nodes. And in our mm -hmm. example, if we look at the roles. Mm -hmm. You see here, some of the VMs were started um, on four. on node two, on node four, four. and I don't yep. see. Do I see node one here? No, I don't see node one here. So he started all the VMs on the other side. So let's see if our <laughs> replication switch that that would be unusual, of course. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Bernard is laughing. <laughs> I know yeah. why. So let's open uh, Windows Admin Center and the storage replica. Uh, replica. If he if he switch the replication, that would be unusual. Huh? So let's see. Uh, but we have seen the VMs are running. 
I I opened one. At of least them, yes. the workload is up and running, which is a good the, thing. The workload right? is up and running again. So mm -hmm. if I, you see here, I have one of the uh, VMs that are usually running on three, and they were running on three. I right. have it open here. Mm -hmm. It's working. It's yep. creating traffic. Okay. So let's see here. And he, yeah. uh, the volume one is still uh, replicating from one to two, but- But the, you need to look at volume three, right? So yeah, because the virtual one. machine's on and it's switched. It's switched, so it switched the volume. Mm -hmm. it, it's not a problem, yeah, yeah, it's okay. It switched the volume and he restarted also the VMs on the other side, on the even side. So. I didn't expect that. I I was pretty sure that uh, node one, as is in the odd side, would also um, be chosen for the replication force to the other side. But uh, the cluster decided to switch the, to switch the the, the replication for uh, volume mm -hmm. four. Volume one is still on the on the odd side, and we will change that, of course. So let's yep. uh, our host come up probably prop not probably so uh, properly properly is the right word. <laughs> so it should be here. Yeah. No, it's still down. Let's see where our console is. And we do this live, right? So uh, this is the wrong one. It's yep. the wrong node. I have another one. I always choose the wrong one. It's like Murphy. You always choose the wrong one. So the node is up and running again, node three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will take some time before it joins yeah. or will join, or maybe it's a refresh. Yeah, it's up yeah. to it's the, a, the failure of a, a cluster manager. If it's mm -hmm. running on another host, it's it has is it doesn't it doesn't automatically sometimes refresh the screen. Now it is mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. So okay. we will we will have to do some things first yep which look for is the repair jobs right yes um do this and also you know do a um how it was before like um reinitiate the yeah, previous we will, state we will where we the site yeah we will move the, the application over again okay now yeah. that's good we will so, do that so it, it takes a while maybe uh -huh. this part will be uh speed up a bit because <laughs> we have to repair everything Okay. Yeah, but first, let's see the repair jobs. I can take the time to prepare the host again so that we can do a blue screen again mm -hmm. to log in. Now you love that blue screen stuff. I mean, yes, the easiest thing would be just to shut the host down, right? Or power them off. But yeah. power off would be easy. Shut down would be initiate. Yeah, not uh, graceful yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. That's not what you want to have, right? But yeah. So okay. I start. So how's the repair jobs going? So here's my. The host is prepared again for a blue screen. The repair jobs are nearly finished, right? That's good. So let me ask you one thing, if you have, um, if I can have your attention. Um, you have. Would you work with affinities um, in a stretch cluster scenario? I, I'm not quite sure if we have touched this, but I think um, yes, I, I would. would. I would. Um, can we? Me too. Can we have a look at the virtual machines? I mean, I, I'm not quite sure if VM Fleet does set the affinities. I don't think so, right? Um, yeah, you, you, do you mean affinity and anti-affinity, or do you mean that we uh, pin our our VM, the start of the VM, to a special node? I would uh, I would not use this one, but I would mm -hmm. use the affinity rule. So, yeah, if you mean this one, yeah, properties, uh, we have in a for a cluster resource for some roles or most roles. Mm. We can say where we like to have this role running. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And we actually does that. Um, mm. So it says all the VMs with the, with the host name three in it yeah, mm -hmm. should preferably run on three. Yeah? Yeah. So they, 
I don't like this because this is micromanagement, right? So you can decide if you have the state, if, if you look at the cluster now, today, you have your numbers of VMs, you can say, I want to order them, this VM there, this VM there, and everything is fine. But then yeah. you get new VMs and you yeah. have to rethink everything. Yeah? And I usually have the opinion, if you have to do something like that, mm -hmm. yeah, you shouldn't, shouldn't have to do that. And uh, you really don't have to. So this I wouldn't, wouldn't mm -hmm. use, but VMplit okay. is very, very... Um, it's an old tool, right? It was yeah, no, yeah, but also the new one, the the PowerShell module does the mm. same, right? We deployed it with the PowerShell module, right? Um, it wants I, to yeah. have everything sorted out very uh, precisely, right? So the mm. volume should be presented on the node where the VMs are running and so on. And I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. The other thing I like in a stretch cluster, and we didn't talk about that either, is uh, the affinity or anti-affinity rules. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have them here in uh, the settings uh, and we click on affinity rules. So mm -hmm. um, let's assume we have, we have uh, an application that is running in multiple VMs. Uh, yeah. Maybe you would like to have the application running on the same server because your network is bad. So you yeah. have a SQL server and you have a, a, a SharePoint front end and you want to have them running on the same server because if one of the parts is not running, the whole application is not running. So it, it doesn't matter if they are on the same host or if they are different hosts, right? So you can have a together here. Uh, mm -hmm. You can choose two VMs here. Yeah. Say, these are our two VMs and we can th say they are together and we make a rule, uh, mm -hmm. same, so, uh, so we say we say SharePoint, whatever same server or whatever mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay usually you would have vms where the application should not run on the same node because it's like uh, like exchange okay. the exchange uh, dag right mm -hmm. yeah. you have an, 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 an high available exchange server and it uh, two of them uh, in mm -hmm. vms and it would be not wise to have running them on the same node so if the node fails right. both yeah. vms are gone yeah. Yeah. so for that we have the apart different servers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we can guarantee or the cluster will try to have them running on different servers yeah and mm -hmm. we can even do different sides cool yeah yep so um that would be uh so and we can do multiple rules for the same server so we can say mm -hmm. they should be on uh, different servers and then we do another rule with the same vms on different sides yeah? mm -hmm. this i like this I think is very useful. The yeah, I agree. I mean, it's you know, it's it it is. Uh, it would be also difficult from a management perspective looking into failover cluster manager for every virtual machine. Try to figure out you know where it's going to be or who is the preferred owner. I mean, you could do PowerShell on this one, but as you said, it's it's looks pretty much like micromanagement, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, no, and that's uh, cool. the cluster yeah. is working quite well without those things, but you can do that. If you have really yeah. a reason for that, you can do yeah. that. Yeah. 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 So let's look how our partnership is doing. It's it's quite okay again. Mm -hmm. So they are completely uh, replicated. So three mm -hmm. is three is uh, so it's on the odd side is the three group right. and the one group is on one host on the odd side is the source. Mm -hmm. The second and fourth group is on the even side, right? Okay. Looks good. Yeah. Looks good. We have to move our VMs, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so if you want to, I mean, or yes, you can do this. Yeah, or... you have something in, in uh, you have something in. Um... The PowerShell way for VM fleet would be move fleet, yes, and say distribute zero, and then fleet picks up yeah, where let's, they. Let's do, uh, so I don't have to do all the work. Let's do uh, VM fleet. Yeah. Do the work for us right yeah so it will assign the volumes correctly mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. will move the vms the, the the csvs are assigned correctly it would yeah. also reassign the csv and the cool thing is i mean we see now on the cluster one and cluster two network the live migration traffic how that's how we configured it right or yes. how you configured it 
Yeah, we did that. I I was the uh, the, no, the, the keyboard monkey, but we did it right. Yeah, I'm just decoration, you know, in that in that. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> <Fair not. laughs> yeah, okay, that's... so it will move the VMs to the the third node. This failed. Uh, some are, yeah, they are all on the other side. So you are co completely. Where's the where's the live migration going? Uh, it's here, right? Oh, it's on the cluster network. It's on the cluster network. Yeah, so sometimes we see some gigabits, but the VMs are so small. They have 1.7 yeah. gigabytes of memory. So there's more time initializing the live migration than really moving them. But you see here, sometimes we see some gigabits here. And as you tell, as you uh, as you uh, teach me, I can click on the on the network card and see some spikes here, right? <laughs> yeah. So it's done now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So cool. Everything should be aligned again. So let's see. Mm all the VMs with a three from here on, we have all the node three here and four mm -hmm. and so on. Everything is fine now. We have no storage repair jobs anymore. See them here. All good. Everything is fine. So should we play with the cluster resiliency? Should we set it on 20 to 20 seconds? Let's do that, right? Yeah, that would be interesting because yeah. uh, four minutes is, is, yeah, it's quite a thing. I mean, we can, cut the video a little bit or speed up the video but yeah let's do it um i i set it to 20 seconds so we will we will recognize um, for 20 seconds maybe if our failover cluster manager would do an update we can recognize that there is mm -hmm. a note um yeah so we can have now a little bit of a of another uh, thing there is another value and i want to be prepared for that so if we do that and say f T, no, FL star, not FLT, it's only FL star. There is another um, another value. This is this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So quarantine threshold is set to three. So if this node has a problem in an hour, three times, <laughs> yeah, and this is not the first time we shoot this video. So we had one crash already. <laughs> yeah. Second crash we showed you, and now we do the third crash. It, when the notes comes back, it is possible that it's quarantined. Mm -hmm. yeah? Because it's the third time in an hour that we have a crash. Maybe yeah. when the first crash was outside of the hour, we will see. And then the note will be, be in quarantine for 7,200 seconds. That's two hours. Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, right. So uh, when a node crashes all the time, mm. you should not put workload on it. And Microsoft honors this by this value. So three crashes yeah. in one hour, then the, the node will not get workload for two hours. So you can play with these numbers. Maybe two hours is too short. <laughs> if a node crashes so many times, I, I wouldn't like to have a workload on it um, mm. for longer than two hours, I guess. So no, only just to be prepared, when we start our node again, if we show that in this video, this could happen, right? There are mm -hmm. more yep. values here. Okay. Okay. So now our workload is running. We have our nodes here. Mm -hmm. I can do a get cluster node, prepare that. Here we have all our nodes up. Mm -hmm. I can move our blue screen, blue screen software over. This is one. This is a node three. I prepared that again. Uh -huh. And here we have node one. Uh -huh. We want to we want to blue screen two nodes in the same side. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Um, can you do me a favor? Of course. Um, you know, let's can we have a look at you know uh, definitely the virtual machines that are being executed on the nodes in the outside will have an outage, right? They will. Yes. They will die. Um, however, I would love to have a look at the virtual machines running on the on the even side if they are sort of affected at all, right? So, will there be any write outages? So, if you can click on this one and you know have a look at the uh, at the storage output to see if it, there will be any effect at all. So, I have to prepare that. We go to Task Manager. Otherwise, we don't see it, right? We yep. start as another PowerShell. We do a disk, uh, disk path Perf. minus, minus, not underscore, minus 
-hmm. why uh, it's a why a big one right yep. so we close task manager and we get the task manager again and then we have our discounters you wanted to see yeah. the discounters yeah. i assume yes that's so here that's we are mm -hmm. so now the problem is how to put everything on the screen that we see stuff I think you know you will we will see the history so if we you, you come back to this if there would be any outage you you would see a decline and you know pick it up yep. again so let's see um yeah but at, so let's that, go to the that'll, notes that'll do yeah. it. okay note one maybe uh, because we yeah. can't show note one and three at the same yeah. time yeah so but now um, uh, again i will blue screen this stuff right? um one thing before one more thing <laughs> yes uh, so <laughs> what is it owner? Who is the owner of that cluster uh, of right. the cluster role? Who's the owner of the cluster? It's four, four. but it's, so four will survive. Yeah, which is, I think it's okay. I mean, it's for for the usability of the fill of a cluster manager tool. It's cool to talk to the host. Yeah, the chance is 50-50 that one node, when, when a whole site fails, that, that the uh, host yeah. server or the core cluster resource is, one of, is on one yeah. of those servers or not. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we could do that, but the problem is the remote management. If the host server fails, it has to be come up again so that yeah. we can do anything with uh, failover cluster manager. And, no, uh, I would leave it like this, right? So I trust yeah. that this is would work if it's on the failing side. It, but it does. It but does. for the uh, for visibility and for demonstration purposes, I think it's uh, cool to have it already on the, the node that is surviving. Yeah. So um, should I crash the the nodes? Yeah, should I make a sound or what do you want? Do a sound, to, please. Do you want to have the... Oh, that's evil. Okay, I will crash it now. Yeah. I crash this one. Mm -hmm. I crash this one. And we learned already, maybe, sometimes maybe we have to... No, this is gone now. This should be gone now. They should be both gone. Let's wait until we see something. There should be something blue here very soon. Come on, why is not why is not something blue coming here? Yeah, there is the blue one. There should be the blue one too. I move them out. Mm -hmm. I will stop them. I will turn them off so mm -hmm. that they don't start on their themselves. Okay. Right. Okay. Here's our cluster nodes. We have our nodes. They yep. both nodes are still there. And there is an. Outages, short outage on this one, right? So let's see the cluster nodes. Mm -hmm. It's hard to well. put everything on the screen. Yeah. So clusters. Yeah, we have now a little bit of confusion in the cluster. Here you see the mm -hmm. PowerShell is not, uh, I'm, I was on the one, mm -hmm. stupid of yeah. me. <laughs> Can't yeah. do that. Uh, so this, yeah, okay. this one died, but the virtual let's machine, what about? It's writing. Yeah, there was an outage. There was an outage, okay. Yeah, that, but that's oh. expected. In, in my part, it's expected. Okay. Because um, let's see if the cluster is, we have to, we, we have to press a refresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now both okay. are down. So they are yep. not isolated anymore. They are down and our roles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the management is a bit, a bit, yeah, loading. Oh, this is that that two remote desktop sessions will die. Mm -hmm. Had that already. So it's not showing what the VMs are doing in the moment. Mm -hmm. But it will come back. Yeah. Okay. So here our disk is is running. There was a small outage. That's uh, that is normal. If there is uh, heavy problems in the storage layer. It right. will take a moment, yeah, but here. Yeah, and it's it's like this, right? So I mean, the uh, the replication should also pick up that you know that it can't reach the other side. So every write that needs to be acknowledged, you know, there will be no acknowledge because there is no one that can acknowledge back. Yeah. So um, let me. Yes, and I think it's PowerShell. before the um, cluster will pick it up again. I think. Um, it is some sort of outage is expectable, right? But it's good to see that the virtual machine doesn't die. Um, it will survive. However, it needs to be a oh, bit it's, patient. It's called PS. Uh, what what no, do you no. want to do? 
I want Enter to go to the other. ETSN, like Enter PowerShell Session. ETSN. I don't do that that way. Usually I like to write, <laughs> yeah. write it out. So let's do a get storage job. I think we, mm. yeah, we don't have storage jobs because one side is gone. Get, um, get VM. We should have a lot of VMs here. Mm. So this is still not very helpful. This is running. Where is this running? This is one of the third one. Yes, it's open. I opened this one. Mm -hmm. And if I press this, there should be something happening. There is one of the OneNotes. Yep. And failover cluster this. manager in picks it up. Yeah, now we have here, you see, mm -hmm. the ones are, some are running, not all of them. Yep. From this three one, some are running, not all of them. We have mm -hmm. to wait a bit if he starts mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this, for example, not this. This, for example, should be running. That's uh, zero zero eight. Mm -hmm. It takes a while, I guess. So I can close some here. There's a zero zero eight. It's running. Yeah, it's creating data. Mm -hmm. And we have a task manager here, but we we don't have the disk numbers. Mm -hmm. But we see it's it's working, right? So the others we have to wait. Yeah, and it might also be you know, um, I mean, failover cluster manager is not, as far as I know, no real time tool, right? Which is no. okay. This is connected. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I close some windows because it's crowded here. So we see our VMs here. They mm -hmm. are all running. Mm -hmm. At least some are running here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's do a refresh here. Mm -hmm. So you see now the ones are running. Mm -hmm. Okay. The VMs from the third one are running. We have mm -hmm. 144 roles. So there are not roles missing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So everything seems. Let's put. Let's look at this one. We see here in the in the preview there is our um, mm -hmm. our VM fleet running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. Sounds we good. can have have a look at the second host. There we have our watch cluster tool. You see here we have no I/O on the first and on the third node because they are they are off. They had a blue yep. screen. They are gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can start them again soon, mm -hmm. and we also see in the storage bus layer no no traffic there. So everything is here, and we have 40, 28,000 IOPS. So we had fourteen thousand per node, and now mm -hmm. we have the double double the IOs on mm -hmm. the two nodes here. So we have still our fifty six thousand. Mm -hmm. So the VMs are running on the two nodes. So we have half our, of our cluster is gone. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, but the workload is running. Let's see here. The partnership is not updated. We have to do mm. that. It takes always a long time to reload this. But the cluster has done its job. It switched. Uh, we have mm. the VMs working. So if the VMs are working, the the volumes are presented on the other side. The cluster shared volumes, and you see that here. We have some some problems to show it, but our replica one volume is now uh, somewhere yes. here. Mm -hmm. it's, so we they have, have been... problems with the management. OK, so one. another question uh, I have is, this is the time now when we are writing to the log files, right? Or where, we, yes. where the log file is tend to grow uh, because you know we can't we flush the log them. file, the log file data to the other node. So um, that is the time when um, when the log file is very is getting very important, right? Yeah. Okay. So we have 150 gigabyte log files. I create, I recreated the mm -hmm. volumes with larger log files even. Um, mm -hmm. So you see here we have 160 megabytes are written here on the two nodes per mm -hmm. per second so mm -hmm. our log files should have enough space to mm -hmm. 
to fill up, right? So, but if our log file flow over, so if the 150 gigabytes are, are due, yep. and it, it's it's less, so there is mm -hmm. some space left, then it has to synchronize the whole volume again. Mm -hmm. So okay. the log file, it can transfer the log file and replay it, like mm -hmm. uh, in other technologies, SQL Server and so on. Yeah, right. also, but if they are uh, overflow, we have to synchronize the whole, vol the whole volume. So if the outage takes some days, maybe, mm -hmm. um, the synchronization will start again. Yeah? The, so so in, in that time frame, the workload will be still running, but yeah. I have the resiliency of only one site. So if now something exactly. goes wrong, um, you know, I need to go back to my backups, but um, because there is no replication and uh, log file is full, um, and um, I need to do the resync from scratch. Okay, got it. I start here again. Let's see mm -hmm. if we can get some decent information from the cluster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has it has some management problems, but uh, yeah, as I see, hang on. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Hang on. Uh, yeah, yeah. Should uh, I start the other nodes, or should yeah. we wait a bit? No, start them up. Um, or yes, I mean, here's one, and see how the uh, repair job or how long it would take. One. Now they will take a while. I move them out of the picture mm -hmm. because full HD is so we you see here it needs attention there's something wrong also the registration seems to be problematic in the moment but i want to go to the replica and see if we can now <clears throat> read it correctly and we have to prepare some powershell we are here on the second one so let's say a do or do i have it already no i don't have it do so you see here, yeah, it has some problems to read the information. Yeah. So do, but it's working. So the VMs, the most important part, the VMs are working. Get storage job FT, and we will do get virtual disk FT, and we will do a sleep five. We will do a while one. So this is like an end, endless loop that shows us the storage jobs. These are the, no, we have, we don't have storage jobs in the moment because storage jobs will appear if uh, the other two nodes come up. They have their, they have their own, uh, there pool. you see it. We, they have mm -hmm. their own um, pool. And yep. This pool is not, not okay. So you see mm -hmm. everything that's on the other side. Yeah, we have here the jobs for that. And here you see the, the volumes of the other side are degraded incomplete. Yeah? Uh -huh. So it will repair now the other side. I see the, the two nodes are up and running. I can show that here. Here's one. Uh -huh. And here's the other with a bigger screen. Yeah? Uh -huh. Both are there again. And we will not blue screen them again. <laughs> I promise. In service. And uh -huh. there are our repair jobs running. So this mm -hmm. will this will go quite fast. And uh, but we will then uh, you see we have a now we have some more information even now uh, that we have a block copy running. You mm -hmm. see here how many gigabytes it has to copy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now we have some useful information here. Not okay. all of it is useful but this uh, is and we see now that the repair or the the repair jobs of the volumes are running. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the replication is zinking or resinking again. Mm -hmm. So it will be, let's say, give it some minutes and we'll, the cluster will be okay. But the workload and the volumes, the volumes are still presented in one side. So we have now mm -hmm. like an active passive scenario, right? All the VMs mm -hmm. are running in one side. All the volumes are are online in one side, uh, mm -hmm. and we have to do something. At, as far as I think, we have to actively move the VMs yep. to the other side and switch the replication side. I don't think the cluster will do that. Mm -hmm. uh, that let's see. Yeah. Yeah. The question is how long uh, 
or should we wait? Usually some processes will not start immediately, so it will take maybe 15 to 30 minutes before something will happen. Mm -hmm. But we will can we can we 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 can still re we can um, we can say bye to our people then and our watchers and still let it run. <laughs> and if something happens, we can show it in the video. Or so you see here, this will be done. See, it has to repair a lot of stuff. Yeah. 33. Nothing is finished yet. And it will take a bit. Usually, if you resize PowerShell, it will also resize the output. The problem is I'm I'm remote PowerShell into the node, so it will not uh, get the new window size. No? So if I can make it bigger here, it will not change anything. So now, one is finished, the cluster performance history is done, the others are still copying. But we don't have the nice information here anymore, how far it's, it's, it's already done, right? So, and if we look here, we still have our workload running. Everything is fine. We have our VM running. So lots, lots of them. So, Bernard, should we wait? So our storage repair jobs are approaching the end. Yeah, we have already three volumes are already uh, repaired and others are not so far away. We have some in the 90s and the mm -hmm. 70s. So I, th I give it another, let's say, five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then our storage is repaired. We can maybe have a look at our replication, you see here, um, it seems like we do a full initial sync, so we do a full sync here, but this is mm -hmm. also nearly done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it it repairs. It's not, let's say, it, some things are done that are maybe not expected. We would have large, uh, large uh, lock volumes. Yeah, with maybe the log file is not as large as the volume, so we have uh, maybe to have a look at that. But uh, all, all overall, the cluster is um, behaving like expected. I'm I'm quite happy with how it how it how it works. What what is your opinion? <laughs> yeah, um, I think management wise. Um, some things need to be known in order to to get it done right or to know where to look at uh, or where to pay attention to but i would say um yeah um it worked like a charm so i remember when we were discussing about the video series um and how to do it uh we were a little bit cautious or a little bit afraid of what will happen in this kind of video but it i i think <laughs> it went out very well um so some final thoughts Carsten. Um, yeah, and to be to be correct, you were a little bit worried. I I have done these tests at customers already, so I I show them what happens if you turn off the notes. And to be honest, um, nearly every time, it really works like expected. So I'm I'm quite happy with uh, with the stretch cluster scenario with two things I would like to 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 have changed. Yeah, when I when I have wishes, so one thing would be improve the lock performance. So it's it's not too bad with two milliseconds. Other uh, synchronous replicating uh, solutions also take time, but uh, 
I would love to see a sub millisecond uh, latency from the from the log volume. Uh, of course, it takes longer to write to two sides than to one side. We can't expect to have the same 0 0.34 milliseconds, a bit longer, but sub milliseconds would be nice. And uh, for uh, a campus cluster, so where the, the sites are very nearby, uh, I would like to have a not so complex network scenario because most of the customers I am working with, they have stretched VLANs uh, on the same campus. They don't have to route the, usually they don't have to route the traffic because um, yeah. the, the VLANs are stretched. So there would be an, uh, a nicer, a not so complex scenario would be nice. Overall with, with the behavior of the cluster, I'm fine. Yeah. Uh -huh. what, what do you, what, what would you say? Yeah, similar things. So, um, you know, make the performance better is definitely one thing. Um, I think um, also uh, having another vision for for a campus sort of or where you where you are the one that is controlling the network, where you are the one that is plugging in the networks, where you have full control over all the devices that are in between. I think an easier network setup would be a cool a cool thing. Um, and um, yeah, that's, I think, it. I mean, for the people watching this until the end, uh, hopefully this was a good a good overview. Um, and I think one of the key learnings that I had um, in when working with Stretch Cluster was that your sizing might be different, right? So don't expect that a Stretch Cluster can take as much load as a non-Stretch Cluster. Mm -hmm. right because it this is not the case right you have seen the performance implications at this stage right so um you need to find the sweet the sweet spot the sweet working spot on uh, on such a cluster and um there might be tunings still what you can do right i mean would you want to replicate all of the right traffic of a virtual machine what about you know the page file that you may have? Does it really needs to be um, replicated over right uh, to the other side as well? Um, I know that this is getting complex if you tackle that that right because um, you would need to um, separate or have multiple disks on a virtual machine. One is sitting on a replicated volume, the other not. But um, you know there might be some things to be thought about. But at the end, I would say bottom line. I, I like that technology, um, although it has difficulties, I admit, um, I hope um, you like it too. Um, think about if you could use it um, and let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would add here because uh, now our replication is, uh, is going on again, it's repaired, but of course still, the source of all is is now the even side. So we have to do some manual steps here. We have to to, to change the replication for uh, for this was a wrong click. Let's go back. So we have to switch the replication again, uh, and we have to move our workload over. But I think the workload would follow the the the, uh, the volumes. So here, let's do a switch direction here. We have to do that again. And also with this one. Yeah. And then uh, move our VMs to the side. This will not be done automatically. Um, and maybe it's it's a good way that it's not done automatically. If maybe you 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 fire up your your cluster in the in the side where you had a failure and you are not trusting the site. You want to prove things there. So maybe your workload is still good at the other side and you want to decide when to move workload over again. So um, when we would have done that, I think we this concluded a, a, a disaster scenario very well. So it behaves very well. And um, we are done with our series, Bernard. Uh, I, I wish you a Merry Christmas and uh, <laughs> Happy New Year. Right? Yeah, uh, I don't think we will do a video series in this year. So maybe no, next I, year, but not in this year. <laughs> yeah. 
So same to you. Um, it was a pleasure. Uh, thanks for sharing the knowledge. Thanks for you watching um, until now and um, have a great day and take care. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.